Uh, hopefully you fasten your seatbelts for the next two hours. Right. That's nonsense, Clint. I'm not buying it. I'm sorry. I, that I, is... don't care, I don't care what you buy. That's, That's nonsense. My feeling. You're not just buying a racetrack. You're buying you're buying a piece of American racing history right there. I mean that that's huge. The history behind the track just mind boggling. You hear a lot of rumors in the rumor mill. I'll just keep tuning in you guys to hear the truth when it comes <laughs> down to it. So <laughs> don't do that. I, I've already had one dose of pin hat syndrome today. I don't need a second one. <laughs> Stuart Friesen said to Brighton says, why don't you bring us to more places like this? And Brett goes, there isn't any other place like this. <laughs> Race fans, it's time to throw it up on the cushion and get dirty. Coming to you live from the Finger Lakes and Southern Tier, it's time for Turn 5 Live. Now your hosts of Turn 5 Live, Steve Ovens, Clint Miller, and Brad Ovens. Oh, yeah. Turn 5 Live, coming to you from the Benton Fire Department at the season-ending 2015 season banquet here for the Black Rock Speedway. Steve Ovens, Brad Ovens, Clint Miller, everybody aboard here for our banquet episode for the Black Rock Speedway. A lot of hardware going to be handed out tonight, some cash going to be handed out, and uh, a few special awards on tap as well. Uh, By the time you're hearing this, you'll already know what those are, but... um, I'll tell you what, guys, uh, what a way, I said this to somebody earlier today, what a way to wrap up the season. It was an up-and-down season. Um, there was a lot of positive things that happened this season, and and what a night to, to highlight and recap all of that. Yeah, from uh, uh, probably midpoint of the season, I think the, it really turned around. Uh, Mike got all the drivers together and said, hey, listen, you know, we tried to make the track tacky. All we did was make it rough, and all you guys do is complain about a rough track. So uh, this is what you're going to get. It's going to be hard every week. It's going to be hard-packed, and it is what it is. And I think from that point on, everybody kind of got the picture that, hey, this was Mike's place and, and, and ran it the right way. And even though it was hard packed and it was slick, I'll tell you what, you know, I, I looked over the stats today, you know, getting ready to talk about handing out all these awards to drivers tonight. And I'll tell you what, the one constant at Black Rock Speedway this season, the racing was phenomenal it sure, it all sure season was. long. Well, you know, I think anybody would rather drive on a, a race on a slick track as opposed to one that's rough is going to throw you all over the place. And, and even even the racing was good, but the competition. I mean, you didn't even have to see the racing to walk through the pit area to see the competition to know that, you know, it was going to be a, a big night and a, a big year for the track. Well, we got, uh, you know, we're going to be talking to a lot of folks here tonight. And a guy uh, joining us right off the bat here uh, grabbed a microphone, Mel Thomas uh, from Thomas Video, uh, announcer at the Black Rock Speedway. This past season, actually, the last two seasons for you, Mel. Last two years, yep, yeah, and uh, enjoyed every minute of it being back to uh, my home base, basically. Absolutely, Mel. Tell me again what year you started at Black Rock, because you've got a lot of history announcing there. Uh, basically, I started announcing. I, I subbed a few times back in the early '80s for Bob Shattuck. Okay. That's how far back I go. But, uh, you remember that, Clint? I do remember okay. that, actually. <laughs> and, and, and it was a lot different then than, than it is now to announce there. That, that was when we had the uh, chicken wire in front of us in the open-air booth right next to the covered grandstands. <laughs> and, and, and the wide-open flag stand that Steve Kellogg often posts pictures of as well. And everybody thought it was chickens in the chicken coop up top. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With a lot of chicken stuff. <laughs> As we start the show tonight, Mel, we were just kind of recapping, talking about all the things that that happened this season. And the one thing that I was just mentioning to these guys, you know, this, the track went through some ups and downs this year and, and still a lot of unknowns here in the off season. But the one constant, Mel, is the racing. The racing was always good. You pick a class and they were all good. Yeah. You know, they all had their off nights, but all in all... It, it was a hell of a good show every Friday night. No doubt about it. Um, as we uh, as we uh, roll through our opening segment here tonight, um, Clint, we've got uh, some news uh, going on here. Um, we uh, we just saw the other night that the Empire Super Sprints released their 2016 schedule, and also a huge three day challenge in July. Awesome. Williams Grove, Sealands Grove, and Utica Rome. Over $80,000 worth of purse money going to be handed out in that Ooh. deal. 
And, and Mel, I'm sure you've been talking to some folks about that. Well, Matt and I have already talked about the Cold Cup because uh, I know uh, Bill Shea and his wife Kim want to do something special with that. And uh, we're already somewhat on top of it. Uh, 10000 <laughs> to win uh, 360 sprint race is awesome. And, yeah, and, baby. And Mel brings up the Cold Cup. The Cold Cup, typically having been run in September right. the last couple of seasons, that now moves so I believe July 31st. Ju- Ju- Sunday, oh. July 31st. Yes, moves to July. Wow. So, And Brad, I think you would just mi- miss that. The Empire Super Sprint schedule comes out. Williams Grove, Sealands Grove, and Utica Rome. Three days in a row, $8,000 to win on each huh. night. We've got an interview that we're going to play next week with Dean Reynolds talking about all three of those big shows. Wow. But, but here's the thing. If you start all three features, you're going to walk away with over... Twelve or thirteen hundred dollars, I think. Right, Dean just said. take the green money. It's, yep. it's fabulous, you know, and it's cooperation between uh, United Racing Club and ESS. Yes. yes. Because when I looked at the URC schedule when I was at the EMPA banquet, I said, "How come these date this weekend date is empty?" And now it's all come to fruition. Why? And here's the other thing: you talk about URC. URC has decided to shut down operations for CNY Speed Week. So, the URC followers that want to come up to New York and travel all through July during Speed Week for the Empire wow. Super Sprints. Five days in a row. Five days in a row. URC said, you know what? We want to we want to support those guys, even if it just means we just shut down for the week. I think that's phenomenal. Wow, that's you know, fantastic. Starts at Canandaigua on, what, the 29th of uh, June, I believe, is the first one. Yeah. Um, Wednesday night, Brewerton. Thursday night, Canandaigua. Friday night, Can Am. Saturday night, Fulton, and Sunday, Sunday Utica, Utica, Rome. Rome yeah. Yes, CNY Speed Week this year. So, um, again, we're gonna we, we talked to Dean Reynolds earlier this week. We're gonna air it on next week's episode. So be sure to tune into that. And I'll tell you what, boys, that episode on, on February 9th is turning into a big one. We've we've already reached out and uh, talked to Tyler Walker, who's gonna join us, um, uh, 600 CC Micro Champion from the past season. He just happened to be sitting next to Eric Rudolph that night when I booked that interview. So we got Eric Rudolph going to join us on that same night as well. He's kicking some butt down in Atlantic City right now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And um, the other one. We're still on the the hook for Matt Williamson. Yeah, still Uh, working on Matt Williamson, who recently announced he'll be full-time at Canandaigua on Saturday night. So going to be a good uh, good field there at CMP. There's no doubt about it. And... uh, you know, they, they got a pretty good schedule put together and starting it off with, with an ROC race at uh, Canada yeah. in uh, April. Now, Mel, we talked to you uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, you were ch- you're starting to tell us a little bit about uh, some shows at Weed Sport that we could potentially see on TV this season. Well, that's a fact. Uh, there's probably going to be some MAV TV shows out of Weed Sport, and we have a meeting with the. Uh, Speedway management on September, or September, uh, February 10th. Okay. Uh, Matt was over there today talking with Jimmy Phelps and doing some pictures of the uh, the fiber optic cable that we've already got run. We've got more fiber optic cable that we're running there, so that we can have all the cameras hooked in the same as we have at Oswego. Yeah. And uh, we're putting together. A, and that's so that you can put out the HD quality. HD so, quality uh, yeah. with a switcher right there at the track. Nice. The camera locations, and uh, we, we've got a lot, to, lot lot, of things to put together, but Matt's working on that as we speak. And, and you know, not only is that great exposure, it's also an investment on Weed Sport's part. It's, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a it's, big deal. It, it is a big deal. So uh, between Weed Sport and uh, Oswego and maybe a couple other big events like maybe the Coal Cup, we, we may have anywhere from eight to ten TV shows on MAV TV because Matt has the in down there sure. with a guy that he used to work with when he was in Charlotte working for Speed. Okay. And uh, of course, Chris Dolak leaving World Racing Group, that's just another ace in the hole. Sure, absolutely. He works, you know, down, now in marketing for Speed Sport. With Speed Sport, yeah, exactly. I'll tell you what, um, y- you look back the last, I don't know, Mel, ten years or so. And and even with your guys' operation, Thomas Video, what what a what a what a big uh, big jump for you guys. Well, you know, when we went to HD, and uh, you know, we're we're kind of proud of the fact that you know, we're one of the few that really do a lot of HD stuff, and that's what really put us up a, a step above. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's working out well. And 
you know, with Matt back here full time now, uh, well, not full time doing video, but right, basically, yes, he yeah, is. at home base anyway, yeah, yeah, back on home base. Uh, we've got a lot of going for us, and his expertise is phenomenal, no and, doubt. And, and, uh, and I think he started at the age of thirteen. <laughs> Doing video at uh, Dundee Speedway back then. Right. Uh, he's now, uh, he'll be 43 next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> Season veteran. <laughs> he said it, not me. <laughs> well, he's, he's, but, he's, got, he's got a lot of uh, experience behind him because, you know, he did all that series with the, uh, you know, direct TV and all the NASCAR stuff that he did down in Charlotte for 10 years. Absolutely. Before he came back north. Yeah. Well, Mel, enjoy yourself tonight. We always do. Got video set up over there, and uh, uh, we're going to have ourselves a good time tonight. Well, I hope so. No <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> All right. Mel Thomas joining us for our opening segment here at the Black Rock Speedway 2015 season-ending banquet. Got a lot more coming up for you, and we'll bring it to you next here on the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed. Ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. So when you get to the corner of Smith and Orchard, you're going to want to take a You are not going to believe this. Marcy and Brad Avenue just broke up, and, go past and the apparently first three she's lights, happy about it. The next left. I don't really think she's happy, but you should be who there. am I to judge, right? Park anyway. on the right. That's I'll what I heard last tonight. night. It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Reekside Entertainment is the official DJ, photo booth, and uplighting company of Turn 5 Live on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stuart Ovens and his staff at Creekside Entertainment are professional and experienced with events of any type. Creekside Entertainment specializes in wedding packages that are affordable and fun, and they are ready to serve you with the most up-to-date music and karaoke selection. If you can sing it in the shower, you can come out and sing it with Creekside Entertainment. And don't forget about the Creekside Entertainment photo booth and uplighting service that will transform your wedding or party into an event the family will be talking about for years. Trust, the entertainment company that Razor's Trust. Call Stu at area code 315-481-9700 or visit them online at CreeksideEntertainmentDJ.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Twitter. Creekside Entertainment, division sponsor of the Black Rock Bandits in 2015. Hi, race fans. This is Brandon Butler, and you're listening to Turn 5 Live on PMN. Brandon Butler bringing us back from commercial break here on Turn 5 Live here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Turn 5 coming to you from the Black Rock Speedway 2015 season-ending banquet here at the Benton Firehouse. Coming to you live here on the Performance Motorsports Network. And uh, now taking a seat with us here uh, is uh, C.J. Guary, winner of the 2015 edition of the Empire 100. And uh, I'll tell you what, CJ, you guys had a great season. You had a very consistent season. And as we look at the numbers, 467 points, one win, and a big win coming there at the big win coming there at the end of the season uh, back in August. Uh, finished up with uh, one win, 12 top five finishes, second place in points for your first full season uh, competing at BlackRock. Yeah, it was a fun season. You know, we made a lot of friends, made a couple enemies, I guess. But that's at any racetrack. Um, we'll uh, have you slide your chair over just to touch. Get right in front of that mic there. I, I, there we I go. don't bite. <laughs> yeah. We can have your mom come over. Clint doesn't bite too hard. 
<laughs> but as long as he doesn't, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Talk to us about the season. Um, you guys, uh, you know, brought a car there to to Black Rock that's had a lot of success there at the Speedway. You know, that, that's a lot of the reason why we came back there. You know, the car has always done well there. Uh, the guy that built it built it for that track. You know. And he happens to be one of our really close friends, so we figured when we got the car, we'd shake it down at Canadagua for a season, get used to the car, and then bring it out to play with the big boys. Yeah. Now, um, tell us a little bit, uh, you know, you got your dad, your brother that work on the car there with you, and uh, I'll tell you, David's a funny guy to watch and follow because he puts a, puts his heart and soul into wrenching on the car. That's the thing about him, you know, that the racing is what he lives for that's what we all live for you know if if you're at the track every friday saturday or sunday night you know you have to be dedicated you, you have to put your heart into the game if it's not into the game then you're not being successful talking 2015 uh, high point and low point of the season uh the low point had to have been the first part of the season you know running with a bunch of new guys we Finally started racing at a track where there was lap traffic. I've never been in that predicament before, got into it, and it screwed me up a couple times, and I just would learn from my mistakes, come back week in, week out, and I started to be a little more successful toward the end of the season. And then uh, I imagine the high point probably came in October? Absolutely. (laughs) Big smile with that answer. Tell us about that, man. Uh, Such a huge race. Um, I think your Victory Lane interview said it perfect. You know, it's it's one of the most prestigious street stock races in our area. Absolutely. I mean, you got the best of the best. I think there were 50-something cars that showed up there trying to make the show. We were guaranteed in the show, but we wanted a better spot. Uh, we drew 37 in the gate for that race, and I had a real good feeling about it. We started first in one of the last heat races, and we were just able to be successful from there on out and you guys you know that was another funny part of your guys's weekend was you know the number 37 and the seven just followed you guys all 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 weekend long absolutely they they say the sevens are lucky but then the the chassis builder his weekly number is 37 and he's our good friend so something was just falling into play there something that was interesting clint and i know you went through this with your guys's team too is that halfway break, that decision of what to do with tires, uh, you know, do we come in and just take a look, see what it is, then go, or do we go right away? And, and, and CJ, I know that was something you guys, you know, came in down the pit road and, and took a look first. When, uh, when I went out, before I went out, uh, my brother and Chris Fisher told me, you know, when the halfway mark comes, wherever we're running, pull up. We'll fuel up and see what needs to be done after that. And uh, when they walked up to fuel up the car, they seen that our tires were about gone. So we pulled into the pit area. We made a shock change, a spring change, fueled the car up, uh, made a couple adjustments in the front end with the tow. I mean, my crew did a ton of work within the 10 minutes that we had, and I just I can't thank those guys enough. They're the best. Clint, talk about that situation because as a, as a crew guy, as a crew chief, that's a lot of pressure for for our weekly dirt track guys that that don't, aren't put in that situation yeah, a lot. It, it really is a lot of pressure, and, and you know they drive a metric car, which means they have coil or <clears throat> springs on all four corners, uh, coil springs. Um, so they have that option of, of making that adjustment. It does take time, but if you have a game plan, you can do it. You know, we're, we had a leaf spring car. And we pretty much had what we had. I mean, yeah. you know, we could have up or down here or there, but um, and then to come in and and knowingly make that decision that's going to put you in the back, you know, behind everything that's going on. And like he said, you don't know, you know, when you're coming up through the field, you can get caught up in anything. So that's a lot weighs on that decision. And you know, I think I think enough people came out. You came out in what tenth to twelfth, something like that. I came out in twenty second. You yeah. came out in 22nd, really? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they were. I mean, you guys were one of the last cars to come out of nope. the pit area. Yeah. No, you're right, because we came out in 20th. I was thinking 10th and 12th, but 20th yeah. and 22nd. Yeah, that. And so as you go through the last 50 laps of that race, you're coming up through the field. You got, um, 
you know, right at the end, these guys are falling out one after another after another. These guys are falling out of the race. What what was going through your mind? Uh, be smooth, be consistent, stay off the gas. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the track? I mean, it had to have been pretty slick at that point. Uh, the track was real slick, real abrasive. You had to be real smart and real smooth with the throttle. If you weren't, you were going to buzz the tires right off it. And I was fortunate enough, you know, I, I watch the DVD from that race probably once or twice a week just because, <laughs> you know, it's it's that big of a deal. You know, and, and that race meant so much to us. And it's just being able to rewatch what I did. It'll help me learn this year if we have that race at Dundee things that I could do, a, a couple different things that I could do differently that I didn't like that I did in that race, and it just, that race, the track, the track was slick most of the season, which is good, we like slick tracks, but slick and abrasive, that makes it even harder to make any kind of decision with a race I, I was just going to say, that's kind of like, that's an oxymoron, I mean, because you wouldn't think of it as an abrasive racetrack as being slick, Sure. and, and, and this was, boy, it, you couldn't get a hold of it, but... It, it would eat the tires right off it. You know, it's it's not like back in the late '90s, early 2000s when Sam and Lynn had it, and it was the blue clay, and it was like glass, yeah, and it didn't wear anything, right? But yeah, this was just it was. I don't know. We we ruined more tires on that day than uh, than what we brought home. So yeah, yeah, and, and and it's it's getting now where you come to expect that during that race. Uh, you know, I think the one thing that everybody wants to know is. You know, if the track changes hands, if somebody else comes in, or even if Dean and, and the family keep the speedway, is will they put clay on it? Because, you know, you guys know better than I do. Everybody says it, but, you know, it, it, clay is something that the, the track desperately needs. The, the track definitely needs clay, but, I mean, in whoever's defense with the clay, the, the clay would be nice to have on the track. You know, it, it would bring... A track back to being a tacky, racy track, but in the same situation, you know, I personally like racing on a slick track because I don't have the money to go out and spend on motors that half of these guys can go spend money on. That's so awesome. if you've got a slick track and if your car will hook up on it, you don't need a motor to get around. you got to be able to drive that car, feel that car, and trust that car sure. versus having a motor to pull you out of a hairy situation. you got to be able to drive out of it. Yeah, and, that, and I was just getting ready to, to add to that. Uh, a slick track, drivers are drivers, and and you can get away with that. If you have a heavy track, everybody's fast for the most part. I mean, you you definitely have your big motors that are going to be you know the upper echelon, but uh, it makes everybody fast, and, and it makes the drivers that are less experienced a little more of a danger to, to try to get around if they don't know where their car's going. Absolutely. Um, where uh, how are we doing on uh, the rebuild for 2016? The car's stripped, the car's naked, and that's as far as we've got. Yeah. Is it is it tough for you guys right now, being that we don't know what's going to happen? Is Does that really play a lot into your guys' decision right now? Not really, because, you know, the way our car is built, there's nothing special to our car. It's, it's a factory metric chassis for the most part, you know. Stock, mount, everything, really. So we could put our car together and we could go race it anywhere and be legal um we're just taking our time because i mean i'm working 60 70 hours a week and i got to make the money to put the car back together sure they won't pay for themselves absolutely not now we're talking about that where you can go race anywhere talk about canandaigua uh adopting the black rock rules that's like i've said before on previous shows you know canandaigua i love the track great track I don't love it as much as Blackrock, but I started racing at Blackrock, so that's always going to have my heart. But Canadagua, where it comes into play, is the money factor. Right. If I could go that's run the big for question mark. If, if I could go run for five hundred bucks a week versus a hundred dollars a week, what's Jeremy going to do? I really hope Jeremy comes out with something because you know the Starks are coming on with that series, which is great. I plan on hitting as much of that as I possibly can. That was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm going to go wherever, five-mile point, skyline, wherever, I, I'm going to hit it because that, that brings in tracks that I've never been to and guys that I race with on a weekly basis. It'll make it more fun for me to go to that track and run with guys that I race with, and I know and how they drive. 
absolutely, and meet yeah. new guys. And I won't go there as the outsider where people won't like me from the time that I pull in the gate. Sure. So, you know, running two nights a week would be nice, but... I can't do it if oh. there's not some kind of money there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't expect it to go and get $20 for, for last place. Absolutely you, not. You, you, you know, you talk, about, you talk about the money winning it. From the team that I came where we were happy to finish in the top ten, you, just to show up and, and make the show, you should have enough to cover your fuel. Absolutely. And, and if nothing else. We've talked about that before. I mean, and I was just talking to some people tonight. I went and I raced Canada Agua Championship night. I went over there. I won. I won a hundred dollars to win. Uh, obviously, I mean, yeah. But that hundred dollars, it was spent before I even pulled out of the driveway. And like I said, I'm not saying anything bad about Canada Agua because I love the place. But when it comes to the street stock class, you know, they're hurting for cars. I would love to see them get the cars back. I'd love to help them get the cars back, but it's hard to do when the purse isn't there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, and, and two weeks and two nights a week anymore is, is hard, no matter what. You know, the nice thing about that is rain out on Friday. Hey, let's go race Canada with Saturday night, and you know you're you're allowed to. It, it enables you to do that, maybe not on a weekly basis, but once in a while. Absolutely. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to you again uh, before the season kicks off. Um, talk to us about some of the folks that uh, sponsor the car for you. Um, we have George Fisher with Fisher Tree Service, uh, Chris Fisher with Fisher Lawn and Landscape, um, Gwery Service, my buddy Kitchell, uh, my brother. We lost a sponsor in the off season because he fell to some financial problems. But uh, Dan McPainting, he, he supported us for the last couple years. Unfortunately, he can't make it back with us this year, but we hope the best for him. We hope he gets back on his feet. and You won't find a bigger cheerleader down in the, on the grandstands than, than Charlie Damick. Absolutely not. And, I mean, unfortunately, due to health issues, he won't even be able to come support us this year. And and that falls in hand with the financial issues. So. Sure. Well, send our best to Charlie. He was He's always a, always a character, always a always good a guy hoop, to yep. see. On the grandstand side, but uh, CJ, appreciate the time tonight. Great Absolutely. season, and uh, you're going to get some hardware here in a little bit. I can't wait. <laughs> CJ Glary joining us here on our Black Rock Speedway Banquet episode. Uh, we'll uh, toss off to a break here when we come back. Lots more from the Black Rock Speedway Banquet. You're listening to Turn 5 Live on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. For 17 years, Stock Car Steel has been a leading material supplier to the racing industry. Now they're also an official motorsports content partner of Race Chaser Online. The biggest names in NASCAR trust Stock Car Steel for all their raw materials, such as carbon steel, chrome molly, DOM, aluminum, plastics, and much, much more. You can't build a race car without the basic materials, and Stock Car Steel is the place to get them. Don't forget to also visit Stock Car Steel's sister company, SRI Supplies, for racing and industry. SRI is your number one source for all your shop supply needs. Nuts, bolts, rivets, tapes, adhesives, cutting tools, chemicals, body shop supplies, paint shop supplies, lubricants, and more. A well-stocked race shop is a winning race shop, and the road to winning begins with three letters, S-R-I. For more information, visit StockCarSteel.com and SRI-Supplies.com. You can also find them on Facebook at Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, or call either company toll-free at one 1- 888-752-7272. Creekside Entertainment is the official DJ, photo booth, and uploading company of Turn 5 Live on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stuart Ovens and his staff at Creekside Entertainment are professional and experienced with events of any type. Creekside Entertainment specializes in wedding packages that are affordable and fun, and they are ready to serve you with the most up-to-date music and karaoke selection. If you can sing it in the shower, you can come out and sing it with Creekside Entertainment. And don't forget about the Creekside Entertainment photo booth and uplighting service that will transform your wedding or party into an event the family will be talking about for years. Trust, the entertainment company that racers trust. Call Stu at area code 315-481-9700 or visit them online at CreeksideEntertainmentDJ.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Twitter. Creekside Entertainment, division sponsor of the Black Rock Bandits in 2015. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the Internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? 
Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of Internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. Hi, race fans. This is Billy Van Pelt, and you're listening to Turn 5 Live on PMN. Welcome back, race fans, to Turn 5 Live here in the Performance Motorsports Network. Uh, BVP bringing us back from commercial break. And uh, now sitting down here in the hot seat uh, here at the Black Rock Speedway Banquet, uh, 2015 promoter Mike Jackson joining us on the program here. Uh, we've had John several times, Mike. Uh, always appreciate the time to, to get down and uh, talk racing with you. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, uh, you want to talk about uh, being able to celebrate all the all the positive things that happened at BlackRock this year, um, and and what a night to do that. Yeah, we've had a great turnout, uh, and I appreciate you guys being here. And like I said before, you guys are great for the motorsports world. Um, talk to us about uh, you know the, we we look back at the entire season. Um, I know that you know you had previous experience working with Vern down at Woodhall before. But I imagine taking the reins as the promoter was was a whole nother experience for you. Yeah, we I worked down there with Vern for a couple of years there with my brother and all of us on there. And uh, uh, when we got the call to come over there and from Dean to uh, promote the racetrack, I thought about it and uh, yeah, I took the reins over and it, it was a real eye eye opener there. Uh, sure. Everybody thinks you just walk in on a Thursday, open the gates, and go racing on Friday, and you're you're close them up and go home. But uh, that's not the case. Yeah, <laughs> something that Clint and us were talking about, you know, in the first segment, was the fact that, you know, you you really put a conscious effort into trying to get some moisture into the track to get it to a tacky surface, but. At, at a certain point, you know, you could only do what you had to work with with the surface. And I think at the end of the season, when we went back to, you know, setting up for the dry, slick conditions, the racing was just as good, if not better, toward the end of the season. I mean, what was that process like, trying to get the drivers to to see that and, and kind of work through some of those struggles? Well, you know, it's uh, everybody's dream to have bite in a racetrack. Uh as far as I'm concerned, the racing is better on a dry, slick track. It brings out the driver in the car. Yeah. Uh, you got to really have it set up. Uh, anybody can drive on a real tacky track and uh, makes the cars, you know, you can't pass. There's not as much passing or whatever. I, I mean, it just it's hard to pass with a with the same motor if you got a lot of bite in a track. Where if you got a slick track, you can slide right through there and uh, really make the car hook up. Uh, the only reason why I quit trying to do it is uh, everybody knows the racetrack needs clay. I mean, it's it's a given. I mean, yeah. he's never put any on it for, what, three, four years. Uh, myself or Dan wasn't going to put any on it without a bigger commitment. Sure. Uh, yes, this year I was going to put clay on it. I mean, me and Kurt were over there working right in December still, thinking we were going to be back there for 2016. and. Uh, we had the clay all arranged to go down, and that then the racing would have been a lot better with some clay. But there was a point where you just why spend the time to try to work with something you're not going to gain on. Let's 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 concentrate on getting some good racing here at the end of the year, and and it turned out great. From your from your standpoint, whoever it is, whether it's Dean or whether it's somebody else. Does that need to be a priority, is, is putting clay down? Definitely. I, w- I would say, I mean, well, this late in the year, it's going to be pretty hard to put the clay on that it needs to be put on. But myself, I think if I was over there, I would try to work it up and put some into the corners and just keep working some in every week, not try to put a foot on all at once. Yeah. And over the course of four or five weeks, you'd have the clay on there that you could get by with this year. Uh, and get rid of the rocks and stuff in there that we had a problem with. 
a question I'm going to ask everybody tonight. I asked CJ, and now I'm going to ask you. High point and low point of the season for you? Oh, I had at the several. Racetrack. At I had. <laughs> I imagine well, we had a couple of those too <laughs> at the racetrack. <laughs> I, I imagine the low point obviously is probably not coming back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I knew for a couple weeks before we announced it, and I was just trying to, you know, I tried jumping through a few more hoops for him, and sure. and I really thought I could get it done. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess the highlight of it is succeeding all year long when and it just it's really heartbreaking not to be back there in 2016 I mean but I made a lot of great friends I mean like I said earlier tonight they're not just friends it's you made family over there yeah yeah absolutely and and you know racing with with your family I mean that's something you Jacksons have always done um, and and the other cool part too is you know watching you get to do this with with your family this year, you know uh, rather it was um, you know uh, the Ruggles family coming over to help drive the drive the truck or or uh, you know I mean Nick Legrad I see you sitting over there with Nick tonight, um, I mean it was such a Kurt. Te- Kurt I mean it was such a team effort this year with you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, even Brad, even he was over there watering the racetrack with me and learning a lot, and and that was open to anybody. I mean, sure, I, you want to learn? I'm game. I'm, I'll teach you everything I know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know it all. I mean, by no means, I didn't know everything going into it, and I still don't. And I'll I'll keep trying to learn because somewhere, somewhere, I will someday. I'll be back at a racetrack promoting. Yeah, uh, it's a lifelong dream. So. Where where do we go? Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, are you looking to, to race locally yourself, or what's uh, what's Mike Jackson got cooking? Uh, Jim Skyler's offered me a ride in his BRP car at Woodhall. Um, I've got an offer to go to Canada and run a sprint car. Um, I might step out and buy a sportsman car again. Yeah. Uh, probably not this year because. I am looking at other avenues. If that thing in Virginia does work out, mm-hmm. that's great. I mean, the guy calls me every day, yeah, begging us to come down because he he really did his homework. He knew what we had to work with at Black Rock. He knew a lot about the racetrack. I mean, he sure. So he called up, and offered it to us, and we jumped the truck and drove down there. I mean, well, it's nine hours. He had a lot on the internet and social media to look at for Black Rock this year. Yes, I mean. <laughs> I, I can you, you got that little dig in there, Stephen. You did an awesome job, and and a lot of people don't realize what Woodhall did pick up by gaining you. I mean, they picked up a very very big piece of the puzzle. Well, the the thing of it is, is is in Clint, we talk about this all the time, and it's not just you know it's not just because that's what I do for racetracks now, but the game has changed so much with promoting a racetrack. And, and not just promoting a racetrack, but telling the world what's going on at that racetrack. Yeah, that's I mean that's a key point. I mean, you were right there. You knew firsthand. I mean, before you left, everybody on the Internet knew what was going on, knew who finished where. I mean, and then again, on your guys' show you do, I mean, how much better coverage could I get? That was the best decision, best money I ever spent. Yeah. I mean, it was worth every penny of it. Yeah. So... We look at, um, and of course, I, I, I'm going down to Woodhall next season. Um, you know, a lot of the guys race down there, down down at Woodhall. You've raced there yourself for years. Um, guy we had on the show here a little while ago, uh, that Van Pelt guy. Him, his nephew now, Dylan. Um, what is it about guys that are successful at Woodhall? Is it? Is it just set up down there? Is it what? What is it that makes people successful down there? Yeah, you, I mean Woodhall is one of the hardest racetracks I've ever raced on. I mean, yeah. I've been to a lot of racetracks. I mean, I've raced all over New York State, Pennsylvania, Charlotte, uh, and I've had a lot of success. But Woodhall is definitely the toughest racetrack I've ever been to. You got to know how to set the car up, and you got to know where to get on the gas, where to get off, how to use the brake with it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to it. And Billy's, I mean, 
he's one of the best. I mean, he's got a lot of laps around there. Sure. I think Big Brother Kirk would probably still whip him if he had a good car. But, uh, I mean, Boy, wouldn't that be a show weekend and we go? Oh, definitely. And it was when Kirk and Billy were there. I mean, yeah. you knew you had the hot guns. and Because uh, for a while, they raced on the same team, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's who actually got me and my brother. My dad owned the cars. But Kurt and Billy and them guys, we put our cars together in their shop. So we learned a lot from them guys. I mean, we go way back. I mean, and they're great, great people. Billy will work with you just as much as he'll anybody else will. And yeah. for Dylan, it's just a, it's an end. Yeah. I mean, you got the best guy in the business teaching you how yeah. to do everything. So uh, it's a great, great deal for him. And, you know, for, for a guy like Billy, and I've heard a lot of people say this to me, he is the most open with his notebook of of any of the competitive guys that that you'll talk to. You know, even though he knows that you could take that and you could go beat him, he's still pretty open with stuff. Yeah, he he is, and and so ain't me and my brother. I mean, we've been open to a lot of people, young kids. I mean, a lot of people don't know who we've helped because we try to keep it. You know, we don't want everybody going around and telling everybody what we do and it. It's no big secret. If you come and ask me, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you yeah. ask me what gear I'm running, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Because yeah. I would rather have it. I'll beat you. I'm not going to try to beat you by the setup. And, and let's face it, if if you can help somebody just coming into it who's all over the place, you help them guys get going forward, it's going to make for better racing through the whole track because you don't have one guy spinning out three or four times and, and possibly messing up a really good show up front. Right, and and that guy, if he comes and asks you and he's been spinning out for weeks and you don't help him, next time he spins out and you hit him, that's your fault. That's right. Yeah, it's not his right. right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. You should have helped that kid, and you, you should have took him under your wing. Absolutely. Now, now, Steve Payne, for instance, I was that kid spinning he was just, out. Oh, I was going to say him. But. I mean, no, I, I've, I've been that kid spinning out at Black Rock. Steve took me over by the fence and said, look, we need to have a chat here, dude. <laughs> you, we got to get you under control. And, and I was just starting out. And I... It, and I, he learned. I learned a lot from him. Yeah. I mean, he's a really good racer himself. I mean, yep. You you can love him or hate him. He's going to win races. Oh yeah, yep. He has been for a long time, and he'll continue to do it. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure until they <laughs> put him in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, I appreciate the time tonight. Um, you know, kudos to you and the staff. Um, and it a, was a success. Put I a solid, successful season together, and uh, hope you enjoy the night. Hey, thank you guys, and I'm glad you guys all came out. And well, absolutely. Guess I'll have to play it by ear what goes on next year. As as we all are at this point, I guess. Don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's too bad because everybody would like to know, but just just give us some time. It'll work out. It'll either work out for the best, or it's going to be what everybody else expected, anyways. So, all right. I don't know whether to say we'll find out tomorrow or Wednesday because the show's going to air Tuesday night. So you'll either find out tomorrow or. Yeah. However you however you go about it. We'll we'll figure it out anyway. But um, Mike Jackson joining us on the program here tonight. Uh, appreciate his time. We got a lot more coming up here uh, from the 2015 Black Rock Speedway Banquet. We'll bring it to you next here on the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! (gasps) It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text. Stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? 
Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. Motorsports sales professionals. Performance Motorsports is looking to build a team of experienced media sales professionals to represent our programming to the industry's top companies, magazines, and racing series. If you have motorsports sales or marketing experience, know how to work with agencies, understand social media, and are incredibly creative when it comes to working with clients and promotions, then we want to hear from you. Top performers are richly rewarded. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. Hi, race fans. This is Chris Doherty, and you're listening to Turn 5 Live on PMN. Welcome back, race fans, to Turn 5 Live here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Steve Ovens, Clint Miller, Brad Ovens joining you here at the Black Rock Speedway Banquet 2015. And we're getting ready to sit down with a driver that pulled double duty in 2015. Dale Welty joining us on the program. Took uh, six place in points in the Crate Sportsman, one win, six top fives. And then moving over to the modified side, ninth in points, 250 points, four top fives. I'll tell you what, Dale, uh, that's a lot of work pulling double duty. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, some of them nights kind of stressful. Run one race and uh, got to jump right out. And a lot of times the features are back to back. And I did learn that I can get out of that car really quick with a Hans device. So uh, <laughs> I guess it's a, it was uh, meaningful that way. Didn't have quite the season we wanted, but ran pretty good. We are pretty solid every week. And not only that, but uh, you guys were running Black Rock. You were doing some grit racing, uh, Skyline. There's some wood haul in there. But you guys really got around to a lot of places. Yeah, we had we had Thunder Mountain too, and uh, we were doing a little of the Bradale Super Series, and we're going to do a lot more of that this coming season. So, talk about some of the places you're looking forward to going to uh, with that series. Well. Uh, our first race this year is going to be down in Middletown at Orange County Fair Speedway. Uh, my car owner, Larry Kennison, and the Modified, uh, he's did a pretty good job this winter coming up with uh, an engine we think is going to compete with some big blocks. It's a small block again, but it's a, it's a really good, strong, small block. Uh, probably it should be if everything works out the way we think it is it'll be the strongest small block engine I've ever had and we're going to try to run that whole Brett Dale Super Series along with uh, whatever comes about at Black Rock hopefully and then probably switch our times up between Thunder Mountain and Woodhall Raceway on Saturdays Gotcha um, You talk about running the Brett Dale Series you know a lot of guys it seems like small block is the way to go with that series. Yeah, I mean, and the features especially. I mean, you still got to qualify in, and sometimes when the tracks are a little tacky, I think a big block is an advantage. But uh, if you can make it into the big show, I think a small block really can uh, show its its beauty and when it gets slick and that type of thing. And, uh, you know, it's... It's kind of funny. I mean, Orange County, the first place we go, it's probably going to be one of the harder ones to get into as far as the heat race goes. But um, in the feature, it gets super slick, and it does that at a lot of tracks. So I think uh, we'll probably be all right with a small block. And you, you talk about splitting time a little bit with Thunder Mountain and Woodhall. And, you know, I've been talking to a lot of drivers this off season as I'm getting ready to start at Woodhall. Uh, on the media side, and what what is the trick to getting around that place? Woodhall, it's a Woodhall is a very unique track. Uh, super high bank. Um, 
It gets pretty slick a lot of times, but it stays soft. It's not a hard slick. It's a soft slick. If you get your car to get down into the track, and uh, most nights the bottom is the place to be, but, but what happens is almost everybody there knows the bottom is the place to be. And um, once everybody gets running that bottom, if you can if you can run that top to get around them and get back down and run your laps, then you're doing good. And uh, Billy Van Pelt excels at that. Um, I We tend to always seem to get our car a little too much on the tight side, have a little trouble rolling that top. And uh, we're working on that this year. We're doing a little different shock package and uh, hoping that maybe we can run the top and the bottom. Gotcha. Um, of course, they've got the, the Short Track Super Series coming back this year. And, um, you know, that was a, a hotly contested race with Dial and Door and uh, Stuart Friesen last year. Um, I, I understand that Dylan uh, is kind of liquidated all of his equipment and won't be back with us. Um, but, uh, you know, it's too bad to see a competitor like, like that, you know, go to the wayside, you know, it, especially when they put on such a great show. Yeah, I spoke with Dylan recently, and, uh, yeah, he's pretty much liquidated everything except his engines. Uh, he's still got a few engines left, but he's definitely out of the sport for right now. And uh, it was a heartbreaker last year. He really, he had a really good shot to win that race, just the way it fell at the end with the going single file right at the end. And uh, he was running that outside, and, uh, I mean, it just, it looked like he was going to pull it down against some of the top teams in the whole country. And uh, it just didn't work out for him, but it was kind of a heartbreaker. But he's been a good competitor all the way back when I ran Superstock. He raced with me and uh, always got along well with him. And uh, he's one of these guys that just loves to race. Um, doesn't really care about traveling the big tracks, but, but he'll run Little Valley. He'll run Woodall and uh, just a really tough competitor. Another thing that we've seen, and, and I've seen you putting some photos up, is uh, this 10-day uh, uh, putting up pictures of race cars. And uh, you've got uh, quite a nice collection of cars to post from. I do. I mean, I've been in this for quite a while. And uh, and uh, when, I, when I put them up, it, it brought me back to some things that I'd forgotten about, like my very first race car, the old Pete Cordes Coupe. Uh, going all the way back to 1975, I believe it was, and putting that car together. And I kind of forgot until I put that picture up and had to tell a story about it that I actually bought that chassis myself for $500. My dad provided the engine, but I literally worked on that car and put it all together all by myself. With his, with his advice, I was 15 years old when I put it together, and uh, we ran that car, and... I mean, I didn't qualify a heck of a lot, but that was the heyday of modified racing. On a, oh, on a yeah. Sunday night at Weed Sport, there was 50 cars that would show up and qualify. And, uh, you know, I learned to race against guys like Will Cagle and Murr Treichler and Alan Johnson. And, I mean, the best of the best. And uh, that did teach me things about being patient, uh, you know, how to run the line. Uh, things that really come back to me even now, like 30 years later uh, when I race. Um, it's paid off in the long run. Uh, a lot of people would say, oh, it's dumb to put a pure rookie and a big block modified. But back in that era, I don't know. It, I didn't crash an awful lot. Um, I think back then the other competitors cut you a little more slack than they do nowadays. Because nowadays you have a lot of young guys that come into it that really didn't put their own money in the car and really didn't put their own time in the car. And sometimes they don't really crack the throttle when they ought to and uh, it causes problems. Is that the biggest difference in with racing these days uh, compared to back then? I think it's just the cost of it overall. I mean, uh, back then, like I talk about, I bought that, that chassis for $500 with no engine. Uh, it didn't have hubs on it, didn't have a rear end under it, but uh, it, was, it had the front suspension under it. I mean, for $500, you can barely buy three shocks now. Uh, so, I mean, the money involved now is just so much. And the engines are just outrageous. That's kind of like why I like that crate class. My brother owns my crate car. I, I provided the engine for it. For $3,300, you get a, a spec engine, the same as everybody else's. And, you know, you can buy a decent modified chassis for somewhere between $5,500, $6,500. 
for so for less than ten grand, which is still a lot of money, but you can get into that sport, into our sport, and uh, have a competitive car and learn how to race against some really great competitors. Well, yeah, I mean the competition with that division is is bar none. I mean, the, the, and and it's because of how that engine rules are set up. Is you know, it just really levels the playing field. It, it makes it not quite as much of a, a money deal. Yeah, it really, it really does. And uh, I mean, the, the thing about the crates now is, if you're a little bit off on chassis, it's really hard to make up. I mean, back when I used to run the super stock and, and in the modified, uh, you can use that excess power you have to correct for handling problems and uh, balance the chassis with your right foot with the throttle. With the crates, you really do not have that option. If you set up a little too tight, uh, you're in trouble, but <laughs> you're going to be struggling. So, so really, you got to set up a little bit loose, drive that car smart, keep your momentum. Um, it just, it does teach you how to keep that car straight. I mean, I, I'm one that I really like to pitch that car in the corners. I like to drive the corners super hard. All my career, I've run with cars that were underpowered, and to make up for that, I drove the car harder in the turns. That does not really work very good in the crate sportsman division. You yeah. really, you really have to stay smooth. Uh, stay square and uh, keep that car running free. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, talk to us about some of the folks that uh, help keep you out on the racetrack this year. You know, of course, my brother Daryl, who's a big block winner. I think he's won like eleven big block races and uh, at Syracuse, which is now defunct, uh, so it'll never change. I think in four starts, he had the best average finish of anybody that ever raced there. And uh, he finished like fifth, sixth, seventh, ninth, something like that. I mean, he was always good. But he owns the crate car. He does 90% of the work on it. Uh, then Dave Colshaw, he's one of our top crew guys, helps on both cars, the modified and the sportsman. He's always there. He always helps us. Larry Kennison and his wife, Nancy, uh, they own the modified. And uh, Larry is just the consummate modified car guy i mean he just he lives for modified stock cars uh the modified sports division i mean he could tell you anything going back into the 50s about the class about the drivers he's known everybody in the sport and uh i just feel honored to drive for him well it's a lot of fun to to watch you race out there and i know it's a lot of work but it's a lot of fun to see you guys do the double duty out there and uh looking forward to uh seeing you out on the tour uh with the, the, the Deo shows, and uh, hopefully we see it at, at Woodhall, too. Yep, hopefully it will be Woodhall, a little bit of Thunder Mountain, Deo shows, Grit Series, and Black Rock Speedway, if everything comes together for the <laughs> new owners. There you go. <laughs> well, Dale Welty joining us on the show here. i uh, got a lot more drivers to talk to before they skedaddle out of here. We'll bring it to you next here on Turn 5 Live on the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Max Dairy Bar is a proud supporter of Turn 5 Live and the Performance Motorsports Network. Opened in 1974, Max Dairy Bar has been a Penyan, Cayuga Lake, and Yates County staple, serving the best Hershey's hard ice cream. They also have soft serve ice cream, their weekly yogurt special, sorbet flavors, gluten-free options, frozen Greek yogurt, and non-dairy lemon ice. Don't forget about their tricky 18-hole putt-putt course that will test your skills to see if you have what it takes to be a champion. Max Dairy Bar and Mini Golf, located on State Route 14A, just south of the village of Penyan, right on the way to Black Rock Speedway on Friday nights. Visit them online at www.maxdairybar.com or Max Dairy Bar on Facebook and Twitter. Stop by Max Dairy Bar and tell them Turn 5 Live sent you. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. 
Creekside Entertainment is the official DJ, photo booth, and uploading company of Turn 5 Live on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stuart Ovens and his staff at Creekside Entertainment are professional and experienced with events of any type. Creekside Entertainment specializes in wedding packages that are affordable and fun, and they are ready to serve you with the most up-to-date music and karaoke selection. If you can sing it in the shower, you can come out and sing it with Creekside Entertainment. And don't forget about the Creekside Entertainment photo booth and uplighting service that will transform your wedding or party into an event the family will be talking about for years. Trust, the entertainment company that Razors trust. Call Stu at area code 315-481-9700 or visit them online at CreeksideEntertainmentDJ.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Twitter. Creekside Entertainment, division sponsor of the Black Rock Bandits in 2015. Hi, race fans. This is Adam Del Grosso, and you're listening to Turn 5 Live on the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back, race fans, to Turn 5 Live here on the Performance Motorsports Network, coming to you from the Black Rock Speedway 2015 season-ending banquet. Going to sit down with a couple of street stock drivers that uh, had a pretty good season this year. Uh, first of all, Jared Hill, driver of the 93, took home the street stock championship. And I'll tell you what, Jared, first, first track championship at a place you've been racing for so long. Um, we've talked about it before, but... You know, now we're at the banquet. You've been crowned the champion. Uh, how does it feel? Uh, it feels pretty good. Uh, I've been trying a long time, and uh, I've gotten close, and uh, I don't know. I didn't think it ever was going to happen, so I just kind of just wanted to go win some race and have some fun this year, and uh, that's what we did. And week two, we led the points, never looked back, and uh, everything got close and get nervous here towards the end, but... Uh, we had a fun year. Either way, either outcome would have been still a good year, but it, it's better when it's more fun. From from my vantage point all season long, it seemed like, especially toward the end of the year, the competition between you and CJ going back and forth for that points race, you guys really made each other better. You you both made each other step up to another level. Well, yeah. Once you can narrow it down to who you got to race with and uh, – know who you got to beat every week and uh if you finish fifth you gotta make sure a guy's sixth if, you know if you win you gotta make sure he's right behind you if he's right ahead of you you gotta make sure you're right behind him you don't want to lose a whole bunch you want to gain a bunch but uh you don't want to lose a whole bunch but it seemed that uh i lost a whole bunch and he gained a whole bunch at the end and uh come down to the wire but uh he definitely made me work for it and uh he's a good good driver and uh he's gonna win one here soon this uh, this guy sitting next to you had a uh, little bit to do with that championship too. Yeah, he's uh, he's had some pretty crappy luck the last two years, and you know he got the points the first week, pick up the opening night win, and uh, I needed a motor there. I broke a motor like three weeks ago, and uh, he's like, "Here, take this one," and we finish off the year in it. Yeah, Tracy, uh, for for that you know for that effort of uh, letting Jared use the motor picked up the sportsmanship award for the season i'm sure that was a little bit of a surprise yeah it was uh, it was definitely a surprise i tried getting these guys to to clue me in i don't i don't like surprises so <laughs> nobody would tell me what was happening what was going on but so how, how did you do that jared you just tell him you know hey you got to be here yeah i just told him that he was coming anyways and uh, he kept trying to get out me and slapped at him <laughs> well tracy i i know that you know your season, like Jared mentioned, you've had some tough luck the past couple of seasons, but, you know, it, it takes such a such a kind act to, you know, to sit out those last couple of weeks and, and help a teammate out and, 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 you know, let him use the motor to, to finish it out. Uh, so, I mean, there's got to be a lot of pride knowing your, your motor did that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't know if the engine motor would be happy to see it doing donuts coming out of turn four after the checker, but... <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it, it's definitely something that I'm proud of. And at the same time, you know, beginning of the 2014 season, I didn't have a motor and he stepped up and I run his for a while. So, it, you know, one hand washes the other. We we got to help each other out. Brad, I stopped by and, and saw these guys doing some work on the cars uh, this past weekend, and Tracy uh, working on a working on a brand new mount. Yep, got a brand new ride coming from 2016 season. It's uh, it's based pretty closely off a Potter car. Okay. There's some differences here and there, but overall the the design is similar. You know, he's, he builds a good car, and with me being a fabricator, it's, it makes sense to do it in house. 
Now, what I didn't realize was that you also had some training down at, at, at Tom Tabor's program. Yes, sir. And that, and that was something I just learned the other the other day. So. Yep, I graduated uh, from the motorsports program in 2008 from Auburn. Gotcha. So that experience that you had there, you're also a fabricator. So now, you know, to me, you know, when I step back and think, Man, he just built a chassis, just put it together. I'm thinking I couldn't even begin to grab a torch and a welder. We'd probably be burning the place down. But um, you know, for somebody like yourself, I mean, just just go right at it. Yeah, that's a uh, it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm working out of town right now for my day job, so I got weekends in on it. And there's been some some frustrations, you know, getting the bends right here and there. And Jerry can attest to that. I don't always take. Uh, take mistakes very well so <laughs> jared no i, I see the well metal fly across the shop today he gets grumpy once in a while but so don't i <laughs> if i'm grumpy he yells at me if uh he's grumpy I yell at him we usually straighten out we get along pretty good we work good together and uh you know it makes it fun it's really what makes it fun you know yeah i couldn't imagine working down there without him and uh you know he's made he's actually made my program a lot better and uh we have fun together it's been a while and uh I raced for 16 years, and I've had some years that, uh, you know, you first start doing it, it's fun, and you get towards, you know, a 10 years in, I had some years that weren't fun, and uh, it's fun again, so it makes it good, you know. Yeah. If it ain't fun, you might as well keep it in the garage. And and honestly, Jared, for those last couple of weeks, you know, when you're trying to root and gouge, get every point you can, to have a guy that's got that experience that, that's racer cars, he knows what's going on. To have that guy helping you tinker on the car during the week and on race night, that's big. Yeah, it made it nice. I could uh, mm-hmm. come in from the heat. I would jet carpet the tires off. He'd take care of the tires. I would go get the fuel, the fuel in, figure out whatever adjustment I'm going to make. Uh, me and Alex would make the adjustment. Trace would work on the tires. we bolt them on. go watch some features and go out and race. And uh, it made it a lot nicer. Guys, talk to us about 2016. I'll start with you, Tracy. Um, building a brand new car. Uh, so what are the plans? Uh, right now... Being, like I said, I'm working out of town. Looking like Woodhall Weekly. Um, I'd like to do the, to be at Black Rock, but it just depends on the work schedule and, and what yeah. does take place there. Okay. How about you, Jared? And actually, before you talk about your plans, congratulations. Uh, expecting uh, here uh, pretty soon. Yes, uh, sometime in the fall, and uh, thank you. Yeah. So I how how does that how does that uh, mesh with the racing plans this year? Uh we should be able to get to the season pretty good. It's probably going to screw up more of uh, 17 more than this year. So uh, we'll have all winter to figure it out, you know, get the baby in there, figure out the routine, figure out the budget. And, uh, you know, we'll figure it out for 17. Uh, for 16, like I said, I, I want to travel a little bit more. And, you know, money's tight. We, we get played a lot better than we used to. It, may, it makes it a lot better. Um, but I, I want to hit... I have not won a Woodhall since 2009. I really want to win one there, so I'm going to try to race there a little bit more. Um, it's, it's hard to say exactly what I'm going to do because my wife holds me to it when I tell you what I'm exactly going to do. So we're going to leave it a lot in the air. Uh, probably definitely will be a Black Rock. Depends on what happens. Uh, there might be a couple scenarios that we won't run there for points, but I just want to go win some features. I want a championship now. Let's, let's go win some features. Let's go run the fight series and win some races and win that title. Yeah, yeah. Let's. I want to win some features. Let's. I want to go run good at other places. I, you know, right. I won at Woodhall and I uh, won a Black Rock, won a Raceway Five uh, with the BRP a couple of years ago. You know, I want to win some other tracks. It's, uh, yeah, I want to be more than a one hit wonder. Let's win some other places now. This uh, this fight night All Star Street Stock Series. What's that mean to to street stock drivers? It seems like there's been a, a good buzz out there for it. Yeah, they get the rules on the schedule out. It's it's gonna be fun. Um, you know, they keep it down to one or about two races a month. It'd be nice. I don't want to run, you know, have a race on a Tuesday and have a race on Thursday. They keep it uh, yeah. separate a little bit, you know, keeping the budget better. It'll be fun. Yeah. How about you, Tracy? Keeping it separated, uh, like he said, two, two shows a month, that's a good number. Yeah. It, it lets guys, you know, compete at their home tracks and still be able to, to afford to, to go out and travel. To, if you have an issue... Give you time to get it, you know, taken care of. You're not always scrambling around. Guys have been talking about this uh, Johnson built chassis. You guys got the, you know, got the standard chassis. 
what's your guys' feeling on it? Or do you have a feeling on it? I personally, I, I don't see an issue with them. They have the jigs that you can, you know, the, the tech devices to to measure the, all these these pickup points for your suspension, make sure everything's in stock location, nothing's been tampered with. They're, they're a good quality built piece. I see no issue with them. Yeah, I agree. I just like Tracy. Uh, if tech does their job and make sure they're legal, then they're legal. I mean, I have no problem with it. Uh, I ran against Shane a couple times. That chance he's not the reason he's winning. That kid's a smart kid. Uh, he does his homework. I've seen people with Johnson chassis uh, two years ago, and they struggle. You know. Yeah. You do your chassis any home, or you do your homework with any chassis, as long as it's a good chassis, straight chassis, some bent, wadded up thing. You're going to win races. Just you got to do your homework. It's, I, it took me a long time, and and uh, and going to race in the BRP for Jim and learning some uh, suspension stuff for that, and just just learning different things and different chassis. You can cross some things over, and it's made my program a ton better. Yeah. Guys, talk to us about uh, who makes it happen for you guys uh, each year. Uh, I really got to thank my sister and my wife and my dad. Between them three, they really make it possible. Uh, Jim Schuyler, uh, he, I don't, I don't raise a whole lot for him anymore, but you know, that's a wealth of knowledge there. Yeah, it is, it is, and we talk and a lot of jokes too. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, a lot of razzing, and but you know, he comes down and talks to you about what he sees, and you talk to him and. If he's got some, or I need help, or I need something, or he sees something, or you know, he, the whole shock package on my car, you know, he he bought two years ago, and uh, he he makes it happen pretty good. So, and uh, just everybody that helps me. I can't name everybody because I, you know, I'll forget people. But you know, between my sister, and my dad, uh, and my wife, and Jim, and Tracy, and just everybody, it it, it, it makes it possible. It's fun. And it's fun, and yeah. they make it so I can do it every week. How about you, Tracy? I uh, definitely got to thank my mom and my dad. Um, throughout it all, you know, since I started racing full time in 2005, they've they've been there to support me. Um, you know, weekly throughout, you know, putting the car back together, from whatever happens during the weekend. We've got Jared and Alex, Dano when he's when he's got time to stop in, um, and really looking forward to 2016. We got some new sponsors on board. Picked up. Uh, Southern Tier Generators and Southern Tier Brewing, Golden Age Cheese, cool. Bradley Supply out of Hornell. So, looking like it's going to be a good year. I'm, I'm excited. Oh, well, I'm excited too. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys down on the high banks, and uh, I, I've definitely got to get out to some of those uh, Fight Night Series races. I think I think that's going to be that's going to be a big story this yeah, year. But that seems like a really exciting deal. Yeah, for sure. Hey guys, appreciate the time tonight. Um, of course, uh, we're recording this at the Black Rock Banquet, uh, Aaron, on Tuesday night in our normal time slot. But, um, guys, we'll see you out at the tracks this year. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. That's Jared Hill, Tracy Dunn joining us here on our banquet episode here on Turn 5 Live. Got a lot more coming from the Black Rock Banquet coming up next here on the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Oh, yeah. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. You are a waste, a loser. Everyone hates you. Why don't you just stay in your car and keep driving? I'm serious. Drive until you run out of gas and get out of your car and walk until you find someone who doesn't think you're dumber than bricks. Could take a while, but at least all that walking might burn a couple of calories. You may not witness bullying like this every day. Your kids do. They want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov to learn safe, simple ways your child can help stop bullying. Be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your streetcar on one of Summit Point's 
three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Creekside Entertainment is the official DJ, photo booth, and uplighting company of Turn 5 Live on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stuart Ovens and his staff at Creekside Entertainment are professional and experienced with events of any type. Creekside Entertainment specializes in wedding packages that are affordable and fun, and they are ready to serve you with the most up-to-date music and karaoke selection. If you can sing it in the shower, you can come out and sing it with Creekside Entertainment. And don't forget about the Creekside Entertainment photo booth and uplighting service that will transform your wedding or party into an event the family will be talking about for years. Trust, the entertainment company that racers trust. Call Stu at area code 315-481-9700 or visit them online at CreeksideEntertainmentDJ.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Twitter. Creekside Entertainment, division sponsor of the Black Rock Bandits in 2015. Hi, race fans. This is Paul Harkner, the announcer of the Woodhaw Raceway, and you are listening to Turn 5 Live on PMN. Welcome back, race fans, to Turn 5 Live here in the Performance Motorsports Network. Stephen and Brad Ovens, Clip Miller, coming to you from the Black Rock Speedway Banquet 2015. And now joining us, a modified driver out of Penn Yen, Derek Paziablo, joining us here on our banquet episode. Uh, congratulations, sir. Sportsmanship Award. For 2015. That's pretty nice. Uh, you know, you never really expect that stuff. Uh, it means a lot uh, to me and my family. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's it's a great award to get. You know, those, those awards Clint picked out of a committee of media, track staff, drivers. So, you know, to get, you know, know that that's where that pool comes from. It, it's just kind of cool. It's great. It makes, you know, people think highly of you. You're doing the right thing. And um, it, it means a lot. Talk to us about the season. You know, we, we talked about it when you got the award tonight. You know, there was points during the season. They had some rough luck. and But I'll tell you what, the thing about it is, is when you had the tough luck was when you guys were running the best. I don't, I don't know how it happened that way. Uh, you know, I guess you'd rather have it happen that way than when you're not running good. Sure. Um, just horrible, horrible luck. Uh, never really had motor problems. You know, had two major motor problems. Uh, all while leading, um, running good, and you know, but you know, we had fun. And, and in both of those races, Clint was just mentioning, you know, that both of those races, you lead in and, and walking away from the guys, and you know, is it probably doesn't make it feel any, you know, any better, but you know, to know you guys are running that well, you know, that you got to say something for that too. Yeah, you, you know, you're running good. Uh, you know, you hate to see it happen, anyways, but. You know, we were contending. You know, people knew we were there. You know, we, you know, we ran well. We made all the right decisions. Um, all that stuff paid off. We just couldn't dot the I's across the T's. We talked to you in the off season about coming back to Black Rock and running two nights a week. Um, how was that for the team? Was that uh, you know, did you guys have a lot of fun doing that? I know it comes with a lot of extra work too. Uh, you, you know, you have the equipment in the shop you're working on, anyways. Um, back to being two nights a week was better than i expected yeah um really enjoyed it uh the whole family the crew everybody enjoyed friday nights at black rock um you know it's just a great bunch of people you know to race with to hang out with um and, and i just um, hate the fact that we might not be there next year yeah uh you know we, we know saturday nights are going to be the regular yeah. but man I, I really don't want to go back to racing just one night a week well, that's what I was just going to say, Derek. Is it seemed like when you were running Canada One Weed Sport towards the the end of that, because that was early in your career when you did that. But it seemed like towards the end of the season, you were getting better at each track. And then you had the year at Canada where you, you had your nights where you ran good, but the consistency wasn't there. It really, it, you know, you don't really know until you do it and then don't do it. Um, really made a difference running two nights a week, you know, just to see, yeah, just to, you know, you're always thinking about shocks, you're always thinking about tires, you know, it just keeps that, you know, that first night, you kind of just get back in the groove, second night, you know, you're right on, you know, you're yeah. right on key, and you're in shape, and, you, you know, you know what 
you want, what you you feel like. You know, you have ups from the night before, or downs from the night before, and it doesn't take a whole week to, you know, switch them around. Yeah, and it's probably a good thing that Canadagua falls on that second night because that's a that's an incredible field over there. It is, and, and it only know, gets better each year. A, you know, you, you see the list, the the list of. Uh, Non-professionals is getting smaller, and the list of professionals is growing. Yeah, um, you know, is that good? Is that bad? I, I don't know, but it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah, but when you like you say, the list of professionals is growing. But when you, as an independent, you know, you own your own business on the side, you don't race for a living. But when you can go up and run into the top five in Canandaigua, you're saying something about your program. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, you know, of course, you want to win. Sure. Uh, we want to run, go there, run good, run with them guys. You know, yeah, top fives, you know, top tens are nothing to hold your head against there on Saturday night. Yeah. You know, so, you know, you have to look at it a little bit differently. Um, we have fun. You know, the guys respect us. We were, you know, utmost respect from everybody. And, and you know, you can, you can run with those guys. Um, you know, you just got to make sure everything works and uh, it's good. But, you know, I really... You know, I wouldn't change it. You know, I don't think I'd go anywhere else. Right? Um, yeah, that's that's what I, who I want to race with, and that's what I want to do. And honestly, your two tracks that you run, I mean, they couldn't be any closer to home unless they were right in your hometown. Well, that, that's the other thing. You know, a lot of these guys got to drive an hour, hour and a half away, and yeah. you know, spoiled. You know, twenty five minutes can't it was not a bad deal. No, um, you know, I, I couldn't imagine. You know, just with. You know, the crew, the family, everybody to drive an hour, you know, there, hour back. It's a lot on everybody. Yeah. Talk about, you know, the difference between Derek Paziadlo, the beginning of his career, and, and where you're at now. You know, it's hard to, I do think back and I'm like, man, I missed the boat on this or missed the boat on that. Um, but I think with, uh, just with racing general changes so much, you can't, what you did five years ago, you're not doing now, yeah. you know. And what you're doing now, you're not gonna do in five years. Um, my hardest thing is, uh, you know, asking for help. You know, like call, like calling the shot guys all the time. Calling them, like one, I don't have time. You know, yeah. I gotta work. You yeah. know, I can't take you know afternoon off and be like just call people. Um, but it's you know, any little tip now you get. It, it, it makes a big difference, but if sure. you don't if you don't go search for that little tip, you're not gonna get it. You know, and, yeah. and you know, and nobody nobody at our level is gonna help you. You know, you can be like, hey, what do you think? They're gonna be like, well, we'll give you a roundabout answer, but we're not gonna tell you. Yeah, I, I was just gonna ask you, man, if, if there were any peers that you were able to talk to on a Saturday night that may be able to help you out, but you just kind of answered that for me there. You kept, you know. They understand, you know, can't really understand. I mean, you can talk to Matt Shepard. Like, I have a very good relationship with all the guys. Yeah. Um, but they also, you know, they're doing it for a different reason. You know, so I think I might get a little as, you know, they might be a little easier on me for a little info, but it's it's tough. It's tough. And, and let's face it, you're not running 15th anymore. Where they're more apt to give you better advice, you're, you're, you're up towards the front now they racing can, with them every week. Right. You, you know, race them and, you know. It's intimidating, I guess, maybe a little bit, but I mean, they're, you know, once again, they're doing it for a living, we're doing it for fun. Sure. You know, so, the, you know, points points and money make a big difference to those guys and when we're just trying to have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> who, was, who was that driver early in your career that, that was the, you know, the advice go-to guy? I mean, I think, I think it bounced a little bit off everybody. Um you know, I raced with Steve for a lot, you know, down in Black Rock and a Candago. We still, you know, parked next to each other. Yeah. Um, you know, you just try and get as much as you can. Um, it seemed like it was easier questions then than now. Now you really got to <laughs> see if you can catch them off guard. Sure, but, you sure. Know, but, you know, stuff's, it seems like stuff's changing a lot more now. You know, different parts, you know, different manufacturers. Yeah. Um, and... It, you can almost dial yourself right out. Like sometimes, you know, towards the end of the year at Canada, we were trying different stuff, and I think we just went wrong, wrong way all the way around. You know, I don't know. Sometimes I, I think, oh, I, I, I got this. I can figure this out. And then yeah. I'm lost. <laughs> you get out there and you're like, oh, oh this isn't going to work. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Lap one of 35. Yeah, this yeah. is going to be a long oh, one. Boy. Yeah. So. so, you know, you look back at this season overall, Black Rock, Canadagua. 
Um, you know, you talk about the fact that everybody had a lot of fun, and, and hopefully you can do the same uh, this coming year. Yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, you know, top ten points in both tracks. Um, you know, should have won a couple times at sure. Black Rock. Um, we were consistent, you know. I, I can't complain. Hopefully this year, you know, I got everything. Same cars, you know, motors, everything come back. And uh, hopefully something happens to Dundee. We'll be right there on Friday nights, and we know we'll be at Candy on Saturday nights. What chassis do you guys run now? Uh, Big Nell cars. Big Nell cars. Gotcha. So still two cars right now, and... Does the does the announcement either way with BlackRock does that change how you guys are getting ready right now or not really right now? Um, you know we got a sm- one small block, one big block, so you know one car will be dedicated to BlackRock, one can for Candag, which is like it was this year. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter. We're just sitting there waiting. Something we talked about in the off season last year was with Black Rock going big block, small block, modifieds. How did that work? Uh, was small block the way to go there? I don't know. Um, the guys won with big blocks. The guys won with small blocks. Yeah. I ran a big block and a small block. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I think there's pros and cons, um, but it's it's nice that it isn't one or the other. Right. So, you know, you can look back and be like, well, I only got a big block. You can go there and race. I only got a small block. You can go there and race. True. So um, that's nice. That's, yeah. That's very nice. You know, I, I don't know, you know, how else, be, you know, it's probably the only place that opened up like that you can run one or the other. Yeah. Final question. I've been asking this question all night. High point, low point of the season for you? Uh, high point has got to be... Um, driving around Alan Johnson on the outside to take the lead in that uh, one of the last races. I think it was the last race we ran at Black Rock. Um, driving away, and then uh, the low point would be the motor blowing up right there in the back stretch. Alan went right back by me and <laughs> won. What, so, uh, when that let when that lets go, does does it give you you know is it just an instant thing or is there indications? You know, a lap or so before it happens. I had no inclination. Um, we were, I remember very well, Alan and I were racing. And, you know, he, he passed me. Um, got a caution, came back, drove back around him. And then, you know, final line, drove away. And then it, it, just, it just stopped. I, I remember that. Stopped. Because we sat right there coming out of two. And that thing was at full song, and it sounded awesome. Then all of a sudden, it was it made a funny noise. Yeah, it was dead quiet. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah there's yeah. there's only there's only two worst sounds or one worst sound in the world is is when everything goes quiet because it's either a really bad wreck or a motor's coming apart. Yeah, and and we unfortunately experienced that motor with him, sportsman Brett Ayers. When it goes dead quiet, it's bad news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Derek, I wish you a lot of luck this coming season. Uh, we've uh, always been big fans of yours, obviously. I mean, our hometown guy, you know. We're so trying. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's great to see you win the Sportsmanship Award tonight. Congratulations on that. And uh, good luck this season. Uh, thank you, guys. All right, Derek Paziablo joining us here at the Black Rock Banquet, talking dirt modifieds, getting ready for 2016. Got a lot more coming up here at the Banquet Show here on the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. For 17 years, Stock Car Steel has been a leading material supplier to the racing industry. Now they're also an official motorsports content partner of Race Chaser Online. The biggest names in NASCAR trust Stock Car Steel for all their raw materials, such as carbon steel, chrome molly, DOM, aluminum, plastics, and much, much more. You can't build a race car without the basic materials, and Stock Car Steel is the place to get them. Don't forget to also visit Stock Car Steel's sister company, SRI Supplies, for racing and industry. SRI is your number one source for all your shop supply needs. Nuts, bolts, rivets, tapes, adhesives, cutting tools, chemicals, body shop supplies, paint shop supplies, lubricants, and more. A well-stocked race shop is a winning race shop, and the road to winning begins with three letters, S-R-I. For more information, visit StockCarSteel.com and SRI-Supplies.com. You can also also find them on Facebook at Stock Car Steel and Aluminum or call either company toll free at one 
888-752-7272. Creekside Entertainment is the official DJ, photo booth, and uploading company of Turn 5 Live on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stuart Ovens and his staff at Creekside Entertainment are professional and experienced with events of any type. Creekside Entertainment specializes in wedding packages that are affordable and fun, and they are ready to serve you with the most up-to-date music and karaoke selection. If you can sing it in the shower, you can come out and sing it with Creekside Entertainment. And don't forget about the Creekside Entertainment photo booth and uplighting service that will transform your wedding or party into an event the family will be talking about for years. Trust, the entertainment company that racers trust. Call Stu at area code 315-481-9700 or visit them online at CreeksideEntertainmentDJ.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Twitter. Creekside Entertainment, division sponsor of the Black Rock Bandits in 2015. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. Hi, race fans. This is Matt Shepard, and you're listening to Turn 5 Live on PMN. Welcome back, race fans, to Turn 5 Live here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Steve Ovens, Clint Miller, Brad Ovens joining you here at the 2015 season-ending Black Rock Speedway Banquet. Now we're bringing on uh, two drivers, uh, sportsman modified driver Casey Pavlik, two-time and now defending track champion in the Crate Sportsman division, and Joe Jin coming in, uh, joining us here. Uh, fifth place, if I remember correctly. Sixth place, all right. Um, we'll start. Uh, we'll start with Joe here, and uh, you had uh, a big win, a uh, couple of big wins, all coming on the same night, back on the fireworks night. Uh, talk to us about that night. That was pretty wild for your team. I got my first win at Black Rock, and uh, my cousin Jake got his first win at Black Rock, and then we. Uh, Pulled off the second win that night, and uh, it was really special. I imagine that running, uh, running both uh, both features on one night had to be pretty crazy uh, for the crew. But um, to to come out and win both of those races, that, that's pretty wild in itself. Yeah, two features in one night definitely makes for a long night. But when you start out with a win, uh, it starts the night off good. And, uh, Pull the second one off. It's pretty cool. Now, a lot of the a lot of the folks that that we've talked to that that were out at that show talked about the fact that you know Joe Jen was running the outside like nobody else there, and uh, you know when you can say that in a field of guys like Steve Payne, Alan Johnson, Tyler Seary, that's really saying something. Uh, yeah, it's some real tough competition there. Black Rock with uh, Steve Payne, and Alan Johnson, and um, uh, you get by them and you win that night. Just, Really Casey, I'll turn over to you now. Um, you had a great year. Another track championship, obviously. You know, that, that always makes for a good year. But the big races, along with the track championship that you guys got this year, that, that was pretty special. Oh, it was awesome. Um, I would have liked to have the Patrick on the big races, but uh, we had a little tire problem on the first 50 lapper, and we fell a little bit short on that one. Yeah. Talk a, talk a little bit about that. I, you and I have talked, you know, I think off air a few times about that. Talk about when a tire seals over. What exactly is happening to that tire when it seals over? Uh, there's a couple different ways it can happen, whether it's chemically altered, which we don't treat our tires we haven't in probably four or five years. Um, but you could either get the tire so hot by picking the wrong compound that the rubber just either disintegrates or the top surface just melts together you could pick the wrong tire and it just never comes in so that top layer is just always smooth 
um, or like that fir- first 50 lapper, we just lapped out a tire. It just had so many heat cycles through it, and it was a caution-filled race, and it finally just said, nope, I'm done. And when it does that, I mean, there's just nothing you can do. You're, you're out on an island, you know? Yeah, the only thing you can do is try to find a different line, something that you haven't used the whole race, and... We were fortunate we fell back to probably 8th or so, but I think we came back to 5th or 6th that night. Salvaged a decent run. And, you know, we when you got your championship plaque tonight, we were talking about the fact that, you know, you guys were coming into this year not even really running for points, but you, you perform at a certain level that, well, we're the point leader. You can't back out now. Yeah, there was no intention. We just wanted to hit a couple races here, do some of the grit stuff, maybe a couple races at Woodhall. Um, but once you rate, once you have a couple good shows and you're right there in points, it's it's hard to turn it away and not come back the next week. Joe, I'll, I'll turn over to you now. Um, I'm getting ready to uh, start work over at Woodhall Raceway, a track that you know quite well. And uh, talk to us a little bit. I was talking to Dale Welty earlier, and he was kind of telling me a little bit uh, about what the trick is to getting around Woodhall Raceway. So. Uh, from your point your point of view, what what's the trick to getting around Woodhall? Well, if we knew we'd have a little more success there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Woodhall's a real tough track. It's like any other track. Uh, this year, uh, we just couldn't get a hold on it. it uh, one gr- one groove track right on the bottom. Uh, basically, if you started up front, you finished up front. It was tough to pass. Uh, not much up on the high side. And uh, throughout the years, uh, we really liked the high side. And that's where we had more success. And uh, just, it wasn't there this year. And, you know, a lot of guys that, that we've talked to, uh, you know, Woodhall, they use the, the draw-redraw format. Um that can either play to your advantage or it can bite you right you in the tail. Yeah, definitely. If you're a good drawer, you'll start up front. And like us, we draw terrible, <laughs> so we start to the back. That's where we kind of like Blackrock this year with a uh, handicap system. It, uh, it's definitely a little bit different, but uh, it seemed to work out better for us. Casey, you run... Um you know, you run Black Rock the last couple of seasons, but you also travel a lot where, you know, you go to a lot of those draw-redraw races. Where do you fall on that? Do you have an opinion one way or the other? I mean, the draw is everything, and it's, you can't practice it. I mean, you yeah. can put a bucket in front of you and for eight hours a day, pick a stick. But when it comes down to it, you either you have lux on your side or it's not. And one season, you could be really bad at drawing. Next season, you could be top five and this year on the travel show we've been really lucky with it yeah and and you know that that pill draw through the gate you know right at the beginning of the night that can either really set you up well or you know it can say well boys now we got a lot of work to do but i guess the one advantage is you know coming through the gate whether you got a lot of work to do or it's going to be an easy night for you definitely there mean there's a couple tracks that like uh out fulton if you're drawing 80 90 Sometimes if you might just well pack up and go home because you know there's going to be close to 90 cars that are doing it. Absolutely. Uh, I want to bring Joe back in for this one. We've been asking drivers this all night long, um, highs and lows of the season. So for uh, for, for Joe Jen, what was the uh, highs and lows for this year? Well, actually, the high came one week and the low came the week after. Uh, the high was definitely uh, me and Jake picking up... Uh, uh, the three feet there, uh, one night at Black Rock, and then uh, a week after, uh, ended up hitting the wall and going in our car <laughs> the next week. Had to go to the backup car for the rest of the year. Had to go to the backup car, which yeah, it was uh, a pretty good car, but it uh, definitely wasn't the other car we had. Casey, I'll go over to you now for highs and lows of the season. How about for you? Uh, the high of the season was probably winning uh, both races of the Ankh Summit weekend. Yeah. Um, and the low would probably be the grit race at Woodhall where we had a wheel cover come loose the first two laps. Uh, uh, under red flag, they wouldn't let me out of the car to get it myself. Mm-hmm. Even though rule states I can, sent me to the pits and had to start at the back. And What's, uh, you know, I was talking to Joe about that. You know, for you, Woodhall, what, what's, you know, 
what's your past been there at Woodhall? We, we've been good there. We struggled there. I've had mixed at Woodhall. I've I've won a few races there. I've wrecked a lot of cars there. Um, I just like the bigger wide tracks. Black Rock is just perfect for me. Yeah. Um, I like you to Carome, even though I can't get a handle on it, but you can race four wide there. Um, Wheat Sport, you can race two, three wide. I just like the real racy, fast-paced momentum tracks. What's it like to, to run on tracks like that, Utica, Rome, Wheat Sport? There's so much history at those places. I don't even know where to tell you on Utica, Rome because I can't touch it yet. I think my best finish there is 16th or 17th, um, and there, that's my worst finishes this year. Um, but you're racing against the greatest. Um, and just That's where the best come from, so some of the northern tracks. Sure. They, they come out with the, the Hoosier schedule, um, and, and I know that uh, you, know, you guys expecting twins now. You know, that'll probably play into the racing a, a little bit, but um, is there you know is there kind of an expectation of what you guys are looking to do this year? Um, I ran 41 races last year, and I got burnout. There's not a lot of help during the week. Um, so unless I can find a ride, I'm probably looking at uh, just doing some traveling, what I can. And probably early August we'll start slowing down with expecting. So. Yeah. And then, and then I'll switch over to Joe here. You guys, uh, you guys got some good news here uh, recently. Going to be getting married uh, next off season. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, the plan is to uh, get married to my longtime girlfriend Kara. Uh, and I get married in uh, November. Uh, we've been together for a long time, but uh, that's all we're doing. Casey knows this well. There's no bigger supporter of Joe's racing than Kara. Oh, yeah. Kara's there every week, and uh, I don't want to make her mad. Kara supports Joe every week. <laughs> Bob Miller, Mel Thomas heading out here, uh, giving us a little wave over the shoulder. But, hey, guys, I'll tell you what. Um, before, we, before we get out of here, I want to give you guys an opportunity to talk about the folks that help sponsor the car, get you to the track. So we'll start with Joe. Uh, I gotta thank my parents most of all. They're my biggest supporters. Uh, my uh, fiance Kara, uh, uh, Campbell's Engines, um, K and A Auto, Joe Jim Trucking, um, HB Smith and Son Insurance, uh, Cameron Mills Market. Uh, without them, I couldn't do it. How about you for you, Casey? Uh, gotta do the wife first. Uh, <laughs> wife Lisa, my mother, my father. Um, CNS Services, Hartman Motorsports. Mitzi's Hair Styling, uh, Dan Prince Consulting. Um, Wants to make sure he's got all of his bases covered. Analogic Incorporated. There you go. I know there's more. <laughs> um, Tracy for his help when he can. Uh, Jared's helped a couple times this year. Um, just any help I can get, it's, it's greatly appreciated, and I wish there was more. We, we talked to Tracy and Jared earlier tonight. They talked about how much fun this season was, and and with with a crew like you guys, that you know you help here when you can, you help there when you can, and and race night is is just all about going out and having fun. Oh, it definitely is. I what was it Ox Summit weekend night one. Jared he let me use his garage. He let me stay in his house. Um, earlier in the season, they'd see that I was having good success with my tire prep, so they'd come to me and they were asking what steps I was taking with my tires and they actually used some of my tools yeah. to try and work on their tires and it's just it's nice to have people me and Joey all season long we bounce ideas back and forth what worked for him what worked for me and obviously it's two motors but some stuff you can kind of play back and forth and see sure. how it works yeah well I'll tell you what guys uh, congratulations on a good season and uh, we'll uh, we'll look forward to uh <laughs> Brady Fultz coming up and giving us a little uh, little texture here. Uh, appreciate you guys joining us on the program, and uh, we'll see you next. Thank you. All right, that is Joe Jin, Casey Pavlik joining us here on the program. Uh, we got a lot more coming up. Uh, we got Doug Smith going to slide in here, and I bet we'll even get Brady Fultz on the microphone before we're all done here. So got a lot coming up here on Turn 5 Live on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. 
High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed. Ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. So when you get to the corner of Smith and Orchard, you're going to want to take a You left. are not going to then believe this. Then what you're going to do is turn Marcy and Brad Avenue just broke up and go past and the apparently first three she's lights happy about and then it. take the next left. I don't really think she's happy, but you should be who there. am I to judge, right? Park anyway, on the right. That's I'll what I heard last tonight. night. It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Creekside Entertainment is the official DJ, photo booth, and uploading company of Turn 5 Live on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stuart Ovens and his staff at Creekside Entertainment are professional and experienced with events of any type. Creekside Entertainment specializes in wedding packages that are affordable and fun, and they are ready to serve you with the most up-to-date music and karaoke selection. If you can sing it in the shower, you can come out and sing it with Creekside Entertainment. And don't forget about the Creekside Entertainment photo booth and uplighting service that will transform your wedding or party into an event the family will be talking about for years. Trust, the entertainment company that Razors trust. Call Stu at area code 315-481-9700 or visit them online at CreeksideEntertainmentDJ.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Twitter. Creekside Entertainment, division sponsor of the Black Rock Bandits in 2015. Hi, race fans. This is the voice, Shane Andrews of the Big Block Modified Super Dirt Car Series, and you're listening to Turn 5 Live on PMN. Welcome back, race fans, to Turn 5 Live here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stephen Ovens, Brad Ovens, Clint Miller, joining you here from the Black Rock Speedway Banquet for the 2015 season. And now sitting down with us, uh, modified driver uh, from the local area, Brady Fultz, driver of the Troyer Race Cars, number 70. Uh, Brady, good to have you on the program here tonight. Steve, I appreciate it. Talk to us about your season. Uh, picked up a couple wins. I believe it was three was the on the win total this year. And, uh, you know, in, in those wins that you had, man, you guys had her dialed in good. Yeah, you know, you know the wins that we did have, the first one I think we were started up front and, you know, it was, you know, I don't want to say easy, but, you know, it was rain shortened. So, you know, you know I'll take that. And, but you uh, still got to be running up front when, a- when ab- the rain comes. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll take it. You know, the car actually was really good. Uh, this, the second one, man, the, the car was probably the best I've ever had. You know, we, I don't know where we started, you know, mid-pack or whatever, and worked our way up, and we, we checked out. In, in uh, tire choice and setup, it was just freaking dead on, and, and uh, the car was just a rocket that night. The, uh, the, the third win, uh, you know, again, we started up front, stayed at the high side. We had a few cautions towards the end and almost came up short to Joe Jin, but we had a hell of a race towards the line, and yeah. but we ended up with a win, so, you know, you know, it makes it way fun to have races like that. Absolutely. I, you know, another race, and, and this wasn't even a modified race, but the, one of the m- memorable Brady Fultz races this year that I remember is that great sportsman feature. You start deep in the field, drive up through the field in the first half of the race like everybody was screwed right to the ground. Um, a little engine trouble took you out that night, but... What, what was it that night that was clicking for you that you could just pick them off one after the other? You know, I'll be honest. You know, I, you know, my game plan was to, you know, just go out there and kind of take it easy for the first half of the race. And, you know, I tightened up the car, did this and that. And I says, well, nobody's running up top. I'm just going to go up top and ride around and stay out of trouble. Well, heck, I was going down the straightaways, you know, flat-footed down the straightaways and, 
let off and coast around the top of the corners, and I was picking off cars left and right. And next thing I know, the first caution comes out, and I'm in fourth place. It's like, so, yeah. it's like wow, that's impressive. So, you know, then we, I said, well, I still need to take it easy and conserve fuel, do this and that, and also the tires, take care of them. And, you know, we... You know, I duked it out. I think it was with Casey, I believe. I think and, so, yeah. And, uh, you know, next thing I know, I heard a noise, and I wasn't sure what it was. Got off the gas, and I was like, well, it's still running. So I got back on the gas and went, made about half a lap. Next thing I know, the thing done. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. First motor I ever blown up. But, you know, that really stunk. But, you know, it, it was really fun to be able to do that, go from start from that far deep in the field and be able to come that far up. So, you know, you'll you'll have that. You will. Thank, thank, thank God it was the crate motor, not the 358. I'll say that. Sure, sure. I mean, had you had that crate for a while? I mean, it seems like guys are able to keep these things for a while. Uh, that that motor was probably, I want to say, three years old. Okay. Um, but the mo- one that we have in the car is still still right now. That that was that motor's from 2007, so that's even older yet. Yeah. So, but you, you can definitely tell that that motor doesn't have the power as the other one did. But the one that let go, did you guys were you guys able to trace back what happened there? Oh no, there's no tracing of that. That, no. that, that thing grenaded. There's pieces <laughs> all over the place. Gotcha. Probably some still stuck in the track. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about uh, you know the modified racing this year. Um, uh, you know, I know that uh, in seasons past, we you know when the modifieds weren't running at Black Rock, we saw you run a little bit at Woodhall, and with everything up in the air right now, I mean. You heard people talking about it tonight. Everybody wants to know what's going on so they can kind of prepare for what they're doing. Um, for a guy like yourself that's run both places over the last couple seasons, what uh, where does that put you guys right now? You know, from you know the end of the season, you know the, this the only thing that we can bank on is right now is Woodhall. Yeah, um, you know what they're doing. They've had the rules meeting this and that. You know what Woodhall is doing year to year. Yeah, so. As far as what I'm building for a car and what I'm we're doing with the motor, that's the only thing you can bank on. Gotcha. So, you know what what happens at BlackRock? You know if the rules comply and uh, you know everything else, then okay. But right now, the only thing you can bank on is Woodhall for us. True. Um, and you know I just had uh, just had Joe Jen, just had Casey on, and, and I asked both of them, you know, about trying to wheel around Woodhall. I mean. They call it New York's toughest bull ring, and you know, for for a lot of guys, it, it is the toughest bull ring. Talk to us about trying to get around that place. You know, the first the first few, you know, the first couple years I went over there, it, it almost seemed way easier for me, I okay. guess. And I don't know if it was competition level or what, but you could go there and you could blast around the high side of that place and pass people left and right. And and now, a few years later, it, it's just like you got to be stuck to that bottom of that racetrack and if you get out of out of that bottom then you're getting passed and so it the place is tough i'll, I'll give it that and you know you, you definitely got to have your game on there and, you know you get up in from the crate division to the modified you better have your game on and you know van pelt he's really tough there so, yeah oh yeah um you know the, the place is really tough yeah absolutely um so we know that uh, you know by trade you're you're up uh, fabricating and building cars uh, up there in Rochester for Troyers. Um, what uh, this time of year for you guys? Is this real real busy time or? Yeah, th- this time of year we're really busy. You know, we just started working a little bit of overtime. Uh, you know, th- it's it's build season. You know, you get yeah. uh, we got cars got to get them out the door. People want their cars, put them together to go racing. So. Uh, I think from September to I don't know was it April or so we're we're jamming so yeah. it's our build and, season and you got one of the biggest trade shows coming up you know and I'm sure there there'll be some more sales there <laughs> yeah they they didn't make out too well down in uh, Philly there I guess you know the snowstorm they get the whole show wasn't that great you yeah know, they had uh, just not many people went out to it, which wasn't a good thing. Yeah, yeah, weather weather definitely affected that show. We were actually going to do last week's show uh, that weekend down in Pennsylvania, down in Hanover, not too far from Philly. And, yeah, I mean, that that, that deal got canceled, too, because of the weather. And 
You know, we see that in the summertime too. You know, just you can't you can't deal with Mother Nature. No, it, that's just the way it is, and uh, you got to overcome it and make the best of it. I know coming up here, and we were just talking about this earlier tonight. You got your annual benefit party coming up. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, we're uh, planning on March 26th at the Dundee American Legion, having another race car party, and I think we're going to do uh, pulled pork again, and and we're going to have a bunch of door prizes and raffles, and and uh, we're going to have a good time, and you guys are going to DJ in, so yeah. it should be a lot of fun. Absolutely. I, I'll tell you, you know, for folks listening tonight, you know, Brady's party is, is one of my favorites to go to. The, the stuff you guys have for the raffle prizes, the door prizes, um, I mean, you can walk out with some really nice stuff. And, and Brad, they give out bottles of wine, so you got to bring a girlfriend over. She's a big, she's a wine fan, so bring her on over and win some wine. And I, I, I'll try. Okay. <laughs> it, just as I say, race car, uh, no guarantee. Race car, she's out. <laughs> hey, Brad. You better do some uh, rethinking on that if you don't like race cars, buddy. Well, the, the only reason I think she doesn't like race cars is the first race I brought her to, it was about 15 degrees in the pit tower. So, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Oops. I think, she, I think she'll she'll warm up to it, but I definitely think Maybe the it's just got to be a little bit warmer for her to warm up to the it. Bottles, she, the bottles of wine will help. She'll either warm up to it or Brad will warm up to the yeah. couch, one of the two. Brad, the wine usually helps. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, Brady. Uh, appreciate the time tonight. Um, I got about a minute left here. Talk to us about some of the folks that help you out. Yeah, all, all my uh, family and friends, you know, help me out. Uh, girlfriend, mom, dad, uncle, and my uh, cousins Willie and Nick you know, help us out a lot. And oh yeah. We hang out down the shop a lot. Uh, all my sponsors: uh, Troyer Race Cars, Barney Moravic Water Wells, uh, ACP, the Decoy. Uh, CB Butler, LKF Vineyards. There, there's and my uncle Alan. He's uh, he's been a big help with the motor and the stuff. So sure. I gotta thank everybody. There's there's more people, but um, I, it's it's been a while since I had to name everybody off. So <laughs> well, uh, will we see you down in the mall show? Um, you know, I I've, I've thought about it. I just. Uh, I got to get things in line, getting the body built. I've, I've got a lot of stuff in line trying to get the car built, and that, and, you know, I'm working a lot of hours, so it, it, it's going to take a lot of work on my side. And, sure. And uh, if I can get everybody in order, sponsor wise, to go on the car and uh, the body panels and graphics in time, and get that back and put on the car and have everything done, yep. then then I'm going to consider it. But. I, I'm just, I just don't know yet. Okay. Well, I appreciate the time joining us tonight, as always, and uh, good luck to you this season. Hey, I appreciate it, Steve. Absolutely. Uh, Brad, we're, we're getting ready to close out uh, this episode here tonight from the Black Rock Speedway Banquet. You've been here uh, producing for us all night long, and I'll tell you what, man, what a way. Uh, we got about uh, we got about a minute and a half here. Uh, we can kind of recap the night. What a way to celebrate the season. Oh, yeah. You know, it was, it was a lot of fun working over at the track, a lot of good racing. Some things obviously could go better, but you're always going to have situations like that. But, uh, you know, with everything that, that Mike and the whole staff was handed at the end of the year, I think it was still nice to get everybody together and, and do what they could for the racers because, I mean, obviously the racers are what kept us going all year. And it's still good to see a nice crowd out here, you know. We, uh, we still got quite a few people oh, out boy. here. Oh boy! Oh, we got Casey Pavlik coming over giving neck <laughs> massages. Head massage. oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, you know this is what I love. This is what I love about the racing season. You know the racing's great, but it's when you know during the off season we can get all get together and have a big party and get the banquet and everybody loosens up and everybody has a good time and yeah, you know not too long. You know NASCAR is going to start here and we can all kick back on the couch and take a nap and pretty soon we'll be at the mall show. So there you go. Well, I want to thank everybody for listening tonight. I want to thank all of our guests for joining us. Uh, we'll see you uh, next Tuesday, February 9th. we got uh, a big show lined up. Tyler Walker. We've got uh, uh, Eric Rudolph. We've, all, we've also got Dean Reynolds. And working on Matt Williamson. So it should be a good show next Tuesday night right here on Turn 5 Live. 
105.5 Live is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network. PerformanceMotorsportsNetwork.com is a member of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-host, and guest and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or marketing partners. Thank you for listening to Turn 5 Live. You can listen to Turn 5 Live every Tuesday night right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stay tuned for more great PMN programming. This is for the world, this is free from nowhere.